Καλησπέρα σας. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ για τη συμμετοχή σας σε ένα ακόμα webinar της Τραβελότοπος. Νομίζω ότι το σημερινό live talk θα είναι πάρα πολύ ενδιαφέρον για όλους, γιατί η TripAdvisor, το Viator, είναι ένας από τους μεγαλύτερους OTA της αγοράς. Έχει λοιπόν ο John Neal σήμερα να μας πει πάρα πολύ ενδιαφέροντα πράγματα. Πριν ξεκινήσω, θα ήθελα για δύο λεπτά να σας μιλήσω για το καινούριο update που βγήκε μόλις τη Δευτέρα. Είμαι σίγουρη ότι όλοι έχετε δει ότι η μηχανή κρατησή σας έχει μία καινούρια όψη, μία καινούρια μορφή, καινούρια οικαστικά. Πιο μοντέρνα, πιο φρέσκα, με ένα τελείως διαφορετικό κάλενταρ, ακόμα πιο ξεκάθαρο και τελείως διαφορετικά time slots. Κάναμε ένα καινούριο front-end με πάρα πολύ δουλειά, το οποίο το προετοιμάζουμε πάρα πολύ καιρό, πιστέψτε με, με διάφορα τεστ που κάνουμε, με διάφορα surveys που έχουμε τρέξει προκειμένου α, το σύστημα κρατήσεών σας να είναι πάντα, α, όπως λέμε, α, α, με τις τεχνολογίες τις οποίες μας βοηθάνε, προκειμένου να έχουμε περισσότερες κρατήσεις και για τους πελάτες μας να είναι μία όψη η οποία θα είναι πιο εξοικειωμένη και μοντέρνα, σύμφωνα με, και με τα υπόλοιπα website τα οποία επισκέπτονται. Τι θα ήθελα να πω για αυτό σχετικά. Θα ήθελα όλοι σας να κάνετε έναν έλεγχο στο booking engine σας. Έχουμε προχωρήσει και εμείς σε κάποιους ελέγχους. Θα ήθελα όμως και εσείς από πλευρά σας να δείτε ξανά, να μπείτε σαν πελάτη μέσα στο booking engine σας και να ελέγξετε ότι όλα βαίνουν καλώς. Οι γραμματοσυρές σας, τα λόγκο σας, οι φωτογραφίες σας. Αν χρειάζεται κάτι αλλαγή, δείτε ξανά το webinar το προηγούμενο όπου η Άννη Θεοδωράκη σας είχε περιγράψει όλες τις καλές πρακτικές. Έτσι. Αν επίσης δεν τα θυμάστε ακριβώς καλά και δεν ξέρετε ακριβώς τι να αλλάξετε, μπορείτε να ανατρέξετε στα newsletter που σας έχουμε στείλει με αναλυτικές οδηγίες και αν δεν είστε και πολύ εξοικειωμένοι με το dashboard της τραβελότοπος προκειμένου να προχωρήσετε σε αλλαγές, θα ήθελα να επικοινωνήσετε μαζί μας άμεσα. Ξέρετε ότι εμείς εδώ στην υποστήριξη κάνουμε ό,τι μπορούμε προκειμένου τα πάντα να σας βοηθάμε και να σας υποστηρίζουμε σε, σε οποιαδήποτε ενέργεια έχει σχέση με τον τραπελότοπο, για να σας βοηθήσουμε λοιπόν και να κάνουμε το καινούριο front-end να, είναι, να έχει την απήχηση που του πρέπει. Λοιπόν, δεν θα πω περισσότερα λόγια. Σήμερα έχουμε τον εκπρόσωπο της uh, TripAdvisor, τον John Neal. Hello, John. Are you with us? I think you are muted. Hi. Yes, uh, I've unmuted now. I'm still getting back used to Zoom again. Uh, okay. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, John. Thank you for joining us and for participating in the, this live talk. Uh, you're giving uh, the chance to our suppliers to ask you questions and to, uh, to present all your new features and updates. So before starting your deck, please tell us uh, some things about you, yourself and your role in TripAdvisor. Right, yes. So um, I've been at, um, I'm in TripAdvisor and Viator for uh, almost five years now. Um, I started looking after uh, Eastern Europe. And uh, when I was looking after Eastern Europe, it was around 12 different destinations. So it was hard work, but uh, I learned a lot. And then in 2019, I moved over to the um, Greece market. So I still am yet to travel to Athens because I took over plan to travel and then the pandemic hit. So the last two years I've been working with, uh, with a lot of our suppliers and accounts kind of getting ready for uh, what hopefully is going to be an amazing year in 2022. Um, yeah. So you, you know our market really good, really well. Of course, we have suppliers for, from other markets as well, but most of the attendees today are from Greece. So I guess you have nice data to share with us. Interesting data. Yes, I just have uh, some high level stuff to share, just about three slides, um, just really on what we've seen so far in, in 2022. Okay, well. great. Uh, just a question. Are you able to share uh, your screen and open your camera or not? Yeah, let me try. Okay, um, I think it would be better to see you, you know? I will share my screen for now. Yeah, sure. Just just quickly, I, I've been trying to show my face, uh, but it's not letting me do it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know who's, uh, it might be the um, moderator or the admin who just might need to help me. Okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Maybe the moderator will be able to uh, to, to assist you. Um, here, here you are. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm, okay. I'm not, I'm, that's not a real chateau behind okay. me. <laughs> it's nice though. Um, so I'm going to share my screen just to uh, introduce to our attendees uh, the agenda, the today's agenda. So I will speak in Greek for now and then turn again in English. Okay? Yes. Yes. Σήμερα έχουμε ετοιμάσει κάποια πολύ ωραία topics να αναπτύξουμε. Να σας πω ότι γενικότερα θα έχει τη μορφή της κουβέντας, της συζήτηση. Οπότε, ανά πάσα στιγμή θέλω να κάνετε τις ερωτήσεις σας και εγώ θα προσπαθήσω να τις μεταφέρω στον Τζον και να σας τις απαντήσει. Λοιπόν, το πρώτο topic που θα αναπτύξει ο Τζον είναι α, θα μιλήσει για, την, για το Viator, TripAdvisor και ολόκληρο το δίκτυο διανομής των προϊόντων σας. Θα σας περιγράψει δηλαδή πώς η TripAdvisor είναι ένα hub όπου συγκεντρώνονται όλα τα προϊόντα της αγοράς και πώς αυτά περνάνε στο Viator και στο, α, στα κανάλια διανομής με τα οποία συνεργάζεται και είναι συνδεδεμένη α, η πλατφόρμα αυτή. Εννοείται θα μιλήσουμε για το κομμάτι του connectivity και πόσο σημαντικό είναι η επιχείρησή σας να έχει API status. Τι σημαίνει πρακτικά αυτό για τις επιχειρήσεις σας και πώς μετράει ο αλγόριθμος της TripAdvisor και του Viator όταν η επιχείρησή σας χρησιμοποιεί, να σας το πω πολύ απλά, Channel Manager, είναι δηλαδή συγχρονισμένα τα προϊόντα με το official booking engine που χρησιμοποιείτε στην προκειμένη περίπτωση με τον τραβελότο, σαφώς. Θα μιλήσουμε για την ελληνική αγορά, τα trends, τα, στα, τα, τα στατιστικά, με συγχωρείτε, μέχρι τώρα για το 2022. Έχω ρίξει μια ματιά, α, ειδικά για κάποιες περιοχές, είναι απίστευτα τα νούμερα που θα δούμε ειδικά για κάποιες ανερχόμενες αγορές της α, Ελλάδας. Ο Τζον θα μας μιλήσει για το product quality στο Viator, δηλαδή πώς αξιολογούν τα προϊόντα σας α, και κατ' επέκταση γιατί μπορεί κάποιο προϊόν να γίνει rejected. Έτσι. Και, για, και γιατί κάποιο προϊόν γίνεται approved κατευθείαν. Θα μας το εξηγήσει περαιτέρω ο Τζον. Θα μιλήσουμε σαφώς για το Accelerate, το καινούριο πρόγραμμα που έχει λανσάρει αυτή τη χρονιά α, το Viator και πώς αυτό το πώς από αυτό μπορείτε να υποφεληθείτε, θα μας μιλήσει ο Τζον γι' αυτό και γι' αυτό θα ήθελα να κάνετε και ερωτήσεις. Θεωρώ ότι είναι πάρα πολύ έτσι, σημαντικό, είχαμε γράψει και ένα blog post για αυτό το καινούριο feature της Viator. Και στο τέλος θα υπάρχει άπλετος χρόνος για να μεταφέρω τις ερωτήσεις σας, τις απορίες σας και να μας τις απαντήσει ο Τζον. Λοιπόν, Τζον, the floor is yours. You may share your screen now. And begin presenting your deck. As soon as you're ready, we can start. You just made this over. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. And is it full screen for everybody now? It's not full screen though. Ah, now it's full screen. It is, it is. Amazing. Um, thank you, Maria. Um, it's really, really nice to get to uh, speak with everyone today. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a senior account manager for Vital, covering the um, what we see as the Mediterranean re um, region, but my the biggest market within that for me would be Greece. Um, I've noticed in the attendees there's some uh, familiar names, so hello to everyone and hello to everyone I, I haven't met um, before as well. So. Just, uh, Mary's been through the, the agenda, but very quickly, I'm just gonna sort of tell you a bit more about Vital and the distribution network. Um, I'm going to talk about, uh, just very briefly about the um, importance of API connections and what the benefits are um, of connecting to, um, to OTAs through um, the channel manager. And then I'm gonna just cover just some uh, quick market trends, what we've seen so far this year and then focusing on um, kind of product quality, why that is so important on Vital, and also want to introduce you or kind of just update you on Vital Accelerate, which is our new marketing tool. And then there's time for Q&A at the end. Maria, it's entirely up to you um, how you want to do it, but I think you know, we can stop after each section, and if, you, if anyone has questions, you know, I'm happy to answer those. Um, there may be some I won't be able to answer immediately, but I will um, do my best to um, you know, sort of get back and, and respond through, through the guys at Travelotopus um, anyway. So I just wanted to give, um, for those that may not be familiar with Vital or are, are looking to, to join um, Vital, I just want to give uh, yeah, just a brief kind of overview. We are the um, global market leader for tools and activities. Um, 
and within uh, Vartor, we're also working across an extensive distribution network. Um, within that, we have a travel agent platform where travel agents self-serve and they uh, promote Vartal products to their clients. Um, we also have an affiliate partner program and a merchant partner program. So overall, with the affiliates and merchants, we have over 4,000 different, um, different partners that we're working with. Um, you obviously may be familiar with TripAdvisor. Um, TripAdvisor, it, it owns Viator. It purchased Viator around seven years ago. Um, back in 2020, uh, Viator was, was kind of pushed away from TripAdvisor as a brand. Um, the, Viator is still owned by TripAdvisor, but the brands, it, it's better for the brands to be separate because they are different in, in what they do. So TripAdvisor is currently sitting as a distribution partner of Viator, which all sounds pretty crazy. And one of the questions we are asked is, you know, what is the difference between Viator and TripAdvisor? But the way to see it is that Viator is the, uh, the tours and activities platform. This is where your product sits. This is who your contract is with. And everything then gets distributed from Viator. Um, to look at it, just some of the partners we're working with, you can see there's some, some really big names there, um, especially across travel sites. We're working with Booking.com, Expedia. Um, we're working with some, some big hotel uh, chains, um, travel agents. We're working with some of the, you know, the biggest loyalty and redemption schemes, um, some technology partners, and also you'll see at the bottom some, some really uh, big airlines there. And to kind of highlight where TripAdvisor's relationship is with, with Viator, um, it sits under the travel sites, part of our partners. And we do have a very close relationship, you know, so it would be our closest partner, the best way to see it. But TripAdvisor has its own, <clears throat> excuse me, its own product team, its own marketing team, and they um, and its own uh, team for the algorithms and, and rankings. So that all sits with TripAdvisor um, and they kind of manage it separately to, to what Viator does as well. But with the focus on TripAdvisor, it means that we can get more people, uh, more bookings coming in through TripAdvisor that way also. Maria, I don't know if there's any questions on this side. Is it quite, is it clear the relationship um, between Vartor and TripAdvisor? Or yes, I, it's, yeah. it's clear. And I think that the most important, uh, what you said is that uh, Viator um, re, uh, I mean, distributes products to Booking.com and Expedia. This is also very important to know. Booking.com, Priceline in general, I, I think they have stopped operations in tours and activities and they've started uh, reselling from Viator um, these products. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. yes. Okay. So the same goes with TripAdvisor and Expedia. Um, and yeah. the relationship is about the same. Yeah, I'm, yeah, with TripAdvisor, it's obviously a lot closer because I'm sat here in TripAdvisor office in Oxford. Um, but generally, the theme is once you launch your product on Viator, then it's just distributed to, um, to TripAdvisor, to Expedia. Um, <clears throat> what you will find with TripAdvisor, every product will, will move over to TripAdvisor. Whereas Expedia is a little bit more curated in the way they take our API. So they kind of pick and choose the, they, they have access to the kind of like the algorithm and sort order and they kind of pick and choose the products that appear on there. So that relationship is very much like Expedia manage that themselves. Um, Booking.com, very similar. They, uh, that's very curated, uh, probably the most curated um, distribution uh, that we have. Um, and it's still relatively new with booking.com. Uh, but over time, we'll see, you know, more and more products um, appearing on there as well. Okay. Do you know how uh, they evaluate the products and they, 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 they pick and they choose the product that they want to resell? Do you know how they do that? Are you aware? It's, it's very much around quality. So what they see on Viator as being, um, and I'll cover this a bit later, what they see is like an, an excellent product or a good product that has really good reviews. So like booking.com are very unlikely to take a, um, you know, a really low scored product um, just because they want to um, show their customers the best experiences um, that they're getting through, through the API. Okay, I think it's, I think it's clear. Uh, Gary, if our attendees have any questions, feel free to share. John. 
Cool. Okay. I'll move on now. We can talk um, very briefly about um, the supplier API side. I imagine, we, again, we are working with um, a number of you th already through the API. So this won't be um, much, you know, uh, news won't be much of an update for you. But for those who are, you know, working with Travelotopus and looking to uh, begin working with Vartal or any other OTAs, just wanted to quickly explain, um, you know, the, the benefits of, of doing so. And Maria, please feel free to add anything because you guys are the utmost experts in this. Um, I have my expertise in other parts of uh, tools and activities, but please do um, you know, elaborate or, or stop me if you want to say anything. Um, but generally, the you know, if you know when you're working with Travelotopus, you want to um, you know, I guess uh, connect API with with an OTA. With Vartal, um, one of the great things is that the availability is coming through um, to Vartal and other OTAs as well. So that um, is a great benefit because um, I'll explain the, um, the overall benefits in a minute. But what that means is it just takes away a lot of the admin work for you. Um, and then the flow from Travelotopus to Vartal um, then comes back from the bookings as well. So it's a, an area where you can manage all the bookings coming back. So your time on the Vital Management Center be, can be quite limited um, when doing so. There's um, just, just a highlight, um, just some more of the benefits here. Um, again, I mentioned about admin work. So if you are, and those who are already connected will know that if you're working with multiple OTAs, if you are very busy and you've got high volume of um of tours operating especially in the high season when you want to if you want to um announce a, a tour is sold out you will have to go into every single one of those management centers um some are probably more difficult than others i know with our tour it's relatively straightforward but still you have to go in and if you have 80 90 products or even 10 it's going to be a lot of work to do all of that so actually you're just reducing your admin work um, and actually, with that, you're able to focus on other things like you know, selling selling more tools. Um, so this is a really great benefit, really great feature of it. Um, there are other things like you know, avoiding double bookings. It, it, it brings in that automation um, of the booking flow as well. Uh, a big part of the API just uh, also means that you can capture last minute bookings because that API availability, the inventory is real time. It means that you know, you're know you gonna be able to get those last minute bookings coming in as well. Um, has other benefits around contactless tickets. Um, if you're kind of working in that, that line where you are again, high volume and you want to automate that process, it's, it's very possible to do so. Um, and also just sort of um, automatically confirming bookings. It, Again, just that word like automation, it takes a lot of the work out of managing your business and means that you can connect to uh, multiple um, OTAs as well. And um, just some just data that what we saw last year, uh, obviously we were in a, a bit of a unique situation with, with the pandemic. But what we saw last year was the proportion of same day traveler bookings was up 38% last year. That, and that's compared to 2019, which was a record year for Vital. Um, and in 2021, the percentage of these same day bookings um, on the products were connected to a reservation system. Um, that was 1.5 1, 1 times higher than those of non-connected products. So what that generally means is those who were connected to an API were able to cater for those last minute bookings because they were on um, an API. And what we saw was those last minute bookings rolling in. Um, in Greece, to give the examples of, you know, the cruise, that it was such a huge uh, category last year across, um, you know, mainland and all of the islands as well. This was, um, you know, those who were on an API would say that actually, you know, being on an API has really helped them get more and more volume um, across. And those were, were coming in really last minute bookings as well, which we wouldn't see such a high volume back in 2019 but when no one was was sure if they uh, if they were able to fly to Greece because of you know restrictions then at least it gave them the confidence of booking last minute um, and still uh, going on their tour or activity and um, Maria did you want to add anything onto the API side um I just from what we're seeing now I, the majority of our top kind of suppliers working with us in Greece are now connected to a reservation system. I believe it, it, you know, other markets as well. 
it, it's it's almost like a lifesaver. It's the way to the way to go. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't have uh, anything else to add. The most important thing, as you said, is that uh, the result of having an API is that you're going to get more reservations, especially those that are the same day reservations. And um, in our market, things to do and experiences are last minute are characterized the, of uh, the last minute bookings. So if you have this tool, the channel manager, and if you use it correctly and wisely, and if you have your availability in one dashboard, then you're going to get more reservations from all the available channels. And of course, you're going to avoid double bookings. Um, one question about uh, the API. Do you take into uh, your algorithm, does it take into account the products that are uh, connected to uh, a channel manager? I mean, do they gain more visibility if they are using the channel manager? John? Sorry, I, I'm, I'm using myself. <laughs> um, okay. This is, it, it's, it's a really good question. So technically, no, but the way the algorithm works, it, it does pick up availability. And what we saw in, so let's talk about sort of 2020, when a lot of businesses were, um, were closed down while there was, there was no travel. What happened is once everything opened up, the API connected suppliers were the first ones to, to go live. So that was because the availability was in the reservation system they were already connected. And actually the algorithm knew that this is a true source of availability and it pushed everything, every, when it went live, every, when the products were published live again, they were the ones who kind of opened up first. So actually there's, there's nothing to say that yes, you will be prioritized, but from what we've seen is it's happened. We have seen um, API connected products perform better than non-API connected products. Um, if that makes sense, it's not it's not like an official technical value, yes. but because the real time availability will will definitely benefit. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it's not, it's not the best answer, but um, just anecdotally, we have seen uh, more success from connected products. Yeah. OK, it's clear. Great. So we can move on the next subject. Let's move on. Okay, so I'm just going to talk uh, very briefly, high level about trends and what we're seeing. Um, and again, this is uh, across the Greek market. Um, so what we're seeing here is the passenger growth versus 2019. Um, it's, it paints a really, really good picture. So the lowest percentage is Athens. Um, and what you're seeing here is the order of destinations this year in 2020 and 2022 that are... Um, in terms of success and you know what, what we're seeing in terms of numbers. So Athens has been a, a, you know, such a strong performing destination with us over many, many years. And for it to be 27% up uh, versus 2019 is still you know, pretty incredible. Um, we're seeing it, you know, Santorini, Mykonos, uh, again, really, really strong performance. We're seeing more and more uh, travelers come in. It's, it's um, we'd say that we're, we're dreaming a little bit, the amount of uh, amount of demand that's coming in for for Greek for the Greek market um, as well, and I'll talk about the source markets in a moment. But um, you know, islands like Rhodes, we've seen this this huge growth on 2019. Um, you, you'll notice that Hania Crete and uh, Heraklion are three separate destinations. It's just the way we report it um, within within Vital, but because they're two, you know two cities kind of on on quite a big island uh we do report them uh, differently so you can see a picture there of uh, hania heraklion and these would be uh potentially tours out of these destinations so you know it could be a, a tour of uh, crete from hania or from heraklion um, depending on the start point and then crete would be the rest of uh, the island as well um, the two at the end, uh, both at the same percentage. I had to double check, but that's not that that's <laughs> that's not an error. It's actually they are both um, the passenger growth is exactly the same percentage on both Milos and Naxos. Um, they were 
you know, smaller destinations for us in 2019, but it just shows there is a, a huge demand um, and we're seeing more and more traffic going to those islands. So anyone looking at product development, um, hopefully this, this does give you an idea of, of what's happening as well. John, the numbers, yeah. the numbers about Naxos and Milos are amazing. And I can confirm that these two markets are uh, are uh, emerging uh, i mean they are uh, we have noticed a, 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 a great growth there um and i can confirm that the growth would is about uh, three digits in our systems too with direct uh, reservations um and uh, just to add something here milos and naxos are offering uh, a good boat cruises boat excursions um, boat excursions, from what we see uh, in Greece, are, are the most, um, you know, popular products. And also the market, uh, the market in Milos and Naxos is mostly from US. Um, and this is why the growth is really big and we have noticed that in these two markets. This is what I was saying before that um, there are some markets in Greece that uh, they, they have an amazing growth. So uh, it's a good to know for our suppliers to invest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're really, really, really optimistic about this year. It does look, it does look fantastic. And um, I have to say, when you're talking about cruise, cruises and, you know, some, some of my, um, my, my suppliers and, and the guys on the call here, you know, I'm talking about catamaran cruises sort of every day. And when I live in, in England and we're in the winter, it's just yeah. probably one of the most depressing things to see all this blue ocean, blue water and <laughs> lovely, lovely Greek food while I'm sitting, sitting there in minus two degrees and raining England. Uh, it's a, uh, it's very nice now that we can, we can talk about this and, you know, the success hopefully that that's about to come this year. Um, I will talk very quickly about the source market. So you mentioned the US, and as you can see so far in 2022, you know, I mean, with Vital, yes, we are. Uh, this is our biggest source market as a business anyway. You know, we are so strong with the US market. We invest heavily into uh, marketing um, in the US, but we're also, you know, investing kind of globally as well. Uh, but this is really, uh, we the English expression, the bread and butter um, of Vital is definitely the US market. Um, and that at times, you know, the, I guess the last like three, four weeks, we're looking at three, um, three digit percentage growth, um, you know, on the same time in 2019, even it's, um, it, it's, it's amazing what's happening um, with that market. And with the US, I think there has been, we did see it, uh, you know, across, especially Santorini last year and part, you know, some of the tours in Athens, we did see a big uh, you know, amount of American travelers um, coming over to Europe. But it's like they've been sat at um, for two years waiting for everything to open in Europe. And especially with the older demographic of uh, American travelers who were quite nervous about traveling over to Europe during the pandemic are now feeling confident and they're now traveling over. So it's uh, all this demand has meant that, you know, the, the gates have opened to the American travelers and they're all traveling over to Greece. And Every single one of the destinations that you see here, we are seeing growth on 2019, which is really strong. Um, and one of the most encouraging things that we've uh, we've seen is the green here, uh, this little green shoot of um, excitement, which is Australia. And in the last two weeks, we have seen uh, an increase in you know passengers on 2019 for Australian travellers. So I, I imagine um, many of you in the room here who remember. The Aussies from back in 2019, we're seeing them start to uh, travel back to Europe. And it could be that it's a similar pattern that we've seen with the Americans. There has been that demand from Australia where they want to come to Europe now. And Greece is certainly one of those destinations. It's um, whether there's kind of family history behind it or it, it's literally, uh, you know, Greece and a lot of the islands is a, a bucket list destinations. Um, it's helped by Instagram as well. You know, you look at Santorini and like the impact of uh, of Instagram and, you know, all those amazing images. And, and so we're seeing all these um, these travelers coming over to Greece. So we're we're very excited about that, too. Um, and just looking at the categories, so um, just to explain 
Some of these look similar, but just to explain the way that we um, kind of report on it. So when you're looking at uh, a cultural and theme tour, uh, this is more likely to be uh, archaeological tours and multi-day tours. So um, two-day tours out of Athens to uh, Delphi or Meteora. Um, the day trips and excursions in the green part there is, um, you know, your, your, your classic full-day tours. Then we have the tours and sightseeing, which would um, fall into walking tours and uh, attraction tickets as well. And then we have, you know, your private custom tours, transfers and food, wine and nightlife. Um, the, this, this is actually for the whole of Greece. So um, with Athens, you'd imagine, you know, you would see a lot more of the cultural tours, tours and sightseeing, day trips out of Athens and private tours. Um, whereas when we're looking at the islands, we definitely see a bigger shift in the orange segment of the cruises, sailing and water tours. Um, more of a, you know, a larger slice of the pie would be towards the, the cruises side as well. But we know it's, um, you know, there's, there's definitely a, a lot of categories out there. Um, and we're seeing really uh, the, the return of multi-day tours as well. We didn't see those for, uh, for two years, but now the multi-day tours are starting to come back. I think with the multi-day tours it's um when you're traveling and you have the covid restrictions in place it's difficult to commit to a four-day tour of greece um especially with cancellation policies because uh there's that that fear of uh you know testing positive and having to cancel your trip last minute and losing um, a lot of money as well so we're, this is uh hopefully a bit of normality coming back as well So that's it for the trends. I don't know if, uh, Maria, if there are any questions on the trend side or you want me to proceed with the, talking about the quality? I don't have any questions, but I would like to remind to our attendees, if there are questions, please do ask on the chat and we will ask them afterwards. Perfect. Okay, so just going to cover off uh, very quickly uh, Vital's product quality metrics. So, when you uh, publish a product onto Vital, your product can be one of two things. So your product can be good or it can be excellent. Um, I'll start with good. And this, to be good, you, that means you're eligible to be on the Vital marketplace. So it's kind of, um, it's more of the, the basic uh, product setup. So when, when you launch, you have to have future availability. And you have to have complete product details. And by product details, I mean uh, meeting, pickup information, inclusions, um, really itinerary, additional information, which is where you would put your safety, safety features and any kind of um, area. If you're operating an activity where it's quite adventurous, then that's where you put the information about who, who can um, do that activity. Um, you need to have a minimum of two photos. Um, the cancellation rate that is cancelled by you as a supplier has to be lower than 15% on the product as well. This is uh, just to really try and um, kind of stop the negative experience for a traveller because if their, their tour or activity is cancelled um, quite last minute, then obviously it's going to create a bit of um, a bit of anger on the supplier side. So we're trying to reduce this uh, this issue and make sure that they have a really good experience. Um, in terms of rating, the product um, has to be above three stars, um, and then it can have um, any number of reviews up to up to fifteen. So when you launch your product, it won't have a review, so it will be good. And then when you get more reviews, um, you can then you know, move up to the excellent level. Where I've shown the metrics here to have an excellent product on Vital, um, so it has to have Again, future availability, it has to have complete product details, has to have a minimum of six photos. Um, the supplier cancellation rate has to be lower than 5%. The average rating is 4.5 stars and above. And the number of product reviews uh, is 15 and over. Um, alongside these metrics, the to be excellent, you have to have uh, uh, instant confirmable products, which you know, API is going to, to help you do. 
the you have to have uh, accept a mobile ticket, which is pretty normal for everyone nowadays. You know, you can as the customer can show their phone and they can show their ticket, which um, is easily um, acceptable for uh, the guys at the start of the tour or activity. Um, the product has to have a standard cancellation policy, and that's the standard 24 hours cancellation. Um, and finally, there's two parts to this one. It's the product either has to have a cutoff time of less than four hours, or if you're connected to a reservation system, if that product is connected, it's overridden, so you don't need to worry about the cutoff time. Even if you have a 48-hour cutoff time, you would still be eligible for the excellent badge as well. So we find that you know working with an API, and if your product is connected, you're going to have a really good chance of getting the excellent badge um, as well. So uh, if you're connected with an API, you get the excellent badge. And if you have the excellent badge, you're getting selected by uh, the distribution network. I mean, Expedia booking that you mentioned before, is that right? Or not? Yeah, it's changed. It's changed slightly. It was initially, but with the excellent badge, you're more likely to, you know, you can, I think, as I understand, you can have a good product. And it still can be selected, but it just depends on the product. If you've got two products that have uh, both have 500 reviews, all five star, but one is doesn't have a cutoff time, so it can't, it doesn't have the excellent badge, then you would have one good, one excellent. Then the the um, the partners would pick the excellent badge. Um, to get just to give an example, if if you have similar products. They're going to pick the the one with the excellent badge as well. If that if that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, 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 for example, we're in uh, a market like in Santorini uh, with uh, great competition, okay, and there are many yeah. suppliers who offer about the same thing, catamaran, okay. Yeah. If uh, someone has the excellent badge, first of all, uh, it would be noticed by uh, the end uh, user of Viator, and it's mostly like to reserve this product, first of all. And second, the partners would mostly pick this product, this supplier, rather than the other who is just, the rating is good. Yeah, if they had the choice between the two, they would pick the excellent badge product. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, Okay. Really, yeah. Uh... And another question. The most important thing is the, the the number of quality photos because we we have noticed that when we configure a product in uh, Viator uh, dashboard, if you don't have good photos, you may get you may get rejected. Is that right? Yeah. The the, the key really is around quality. So if you have really kind of like low res images, it would get rejected when you try and launch it. Um, I think now they would say a minimum of six photos is really, I mean, sometimes we understand it's difficult to get six photos for, you know, because of licensing or um, for various reasons. But when you look at the products anyway on Viator, if you only have two images, that product will look, not look nice at all because you'll have a lot of uh, empty space where other images should be. Um, and also for a customer, if you're going to spend 100 euros per person on a, on a sailing cruise and there's only two images, it's not, it's not great. I think when we all go and buy things on Amazon or e-commerce sites, you know, other areas, or if we're looking to book holidays ourselves, if there was only two images, probably we're more likely to book something where we can see more images. And if they have travel images as well, it's even better. Um, so we'd say where you know, really try and have the six images um, possible. So if, you got, if you've got a good content, which means quality photos, the right titles, sale friendly, and uh, you, are, uh, you can uh, instantly uh, book uh, a product, this would raise your reservations. Is that right? We have to take care of our content. And yeah of our booking the way if we are bookable instantly bookable is that right yeah absolutely um it's the way 
if you know the world has changed and the way that consumers purchase products has changed instant confirmable is you know the way to go really clear titles really great images really good um, product details so when you're writing your overview for your new product if you just have two lines of text it's it's not it's not going to be you know very attractive for a customer if you write a whole novel a whole book of information it's too much so it's just finding the right balance of, of you know writing overview and writing the information and making sure that all that information is there um, definitely think like a, a traveler, think like a customer, what is inf- important for them as well. We do have some um, online blogs and areas that have been written by um, staff at Vital, which we can I can share with you, Maria, um, if you wanted to share with um, the guys as well. But there's some really helpful tips on what makes a good title and what makes a good photo um, information like that, which will probably be um, very helpful. Yes, please do so. Could you explain us a little bit more about the standard cancellation policy? Yeah. The standard cancellation policy in Viator. So the standard cancellation policy is 24 hour. Um, This is like a a free cancellation up until 24 hours before the start time of the uh, tour or activity. And the other policy we have is all sales final as well. There are options if you are operating a multi-day tour. There are um, further cancellation policies that are available, um, but currently really it's a 24-hour standard or it's an all-sales final as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, We have many questions. I will uh, not proceed with the questions now. I will, we will answer them after your uh, presentation. Yeah, no problem. Um, I'm conscious of time as well. So what I'll do, I'm going to talk about, um, and actually I'm going to give you an example of an excellent product as well that we yeah. have uh, with uh, Spiridakos um, here. Spiridakos, so that, Nicolas, yeah. you are with us. Nicholas is on the, he's, he's on the call. Yes, I, I saw that. Um, he's, yeah. obviously not, he's obviously not very busy, you know. <laughs> um, so we... Yeah, this is uh, just an example. And one great thing with the badge of excellence um, in the back end of the system, the algorithm favors uh, products, um, certainly around reviews, certainly around availability, pricing, um, categories as well. And the, the badge of excellence is something that sits there and it really pushes through quality as well. So quality is a really big part of the algorithm. Um, So if you've got the badge of excellence, you've got really good reviews and you're getting often getting reviews. um, This is a really big, really important part. So um, I'd say the excellent badge is definitely something worth um, chasing and and pursuing as well. Um, I'm I'm just going to now move on to Vata Accelerate and I will go fairly quickly through this because I want to answer some questions as well. So um, just to give you a very, very quick um, Intro to Vata Accelerate, if you're not familiar with it. Um, This was um, the the product of many years of feedback from working with our suppliers. And they've uh, told us that it's very hard to stand out on the Vata marketplace. There is a lot of products on the Vata marketplace. How does their product stand out as well? So we have the quality part of the algorithm. Now we have Vata Accelerate. Um, And what are the benefits of Vata Accelerate? So it means that you can get more promotion for your products. You can reach more travelers looking to book and you also have um, access to uh, kind of enhanced performance insights as well. So more visibility on uh, for your products leads to more booking. So on the left-hand side, we have a product that has not opted into Vata Accelerate. Um, On that product, we now have a merchandising shelf Um, On the right hand side, you'll see a product that has opted into Vital Accelerate and you'll notice the product on the right is appearing uh, on the carousel as well. So when you opt into Vata Accelerate, it means that you will get uh, an increase in traffic and it's through different ways. So this is on a product level. We also have it across destination pages. So when you look at uh, Athens and Santorini and Mykonos, you'll see that there are some shelves called Explore Our Promoted Experiences. And that's where products on Vital Accelerate um, will appear. So it's, again, getting more traffic. 
Um, you may notice at the moment there, when you look at the Viator sort order, so if you went to um, all Athens tours, you will see there's a promoted uh, slot at the top. And that is part of Viator Accelerate as well. It's a test we're running. And that is um, a really, really high traffic area. So what we're doing is by, um, and I'll explain the, uh, the kind of functionality and the mechanics behind it, but essentially you will be buying more traffic. Um, and again, when you buy more traffic the convert, and you have the same conversion rate, that means you're going to um, get an increase in bookings too. Um, just some testimonials here, but on average, so we launched Vital Accelerate in, um, at the end of January this year, but it's been running in the US since late 2021 um, and parts of uh, other parts of Europe as well, where we've seen uh, high, high demand. Um, and we can see some testimonials here from those partners. On average, we've seen a 15% increase in bookings from the suppliers that have opted into Vato Accelerate. Um, just a caveat, those, um, the number of, the, the increase in bookings that you may see is, uh, depends on the market forces um, and it can change. So a lot of the 15% increase was across the US. Uh, we did see this in parts of uh, Europe as well, but um, now we're in 2022. This figure um, is much more likely for everyone now that we're seeing a real return of travellers too. Um, so how it works, uh, the eligibility and entry criteria for Vato Accelerate, your product needs to be good or excellent. Um, you need to have at least one review, uh, but through TripAdvisor, you can... Um, uh, customers can review your products through TripAdvisor and that will count towards your um, vital product as well. So if you have one product review on TripAdvisor, that means you are going to um, be eligible then for Accelerate. Um, it needs to be an active product, so it needs to have availability um, to, to move forward. Um, and in terms of the commercial mechanics of Vital Accelerate, so in every destination, we have a minimum commission rate, and that depends on a destination and the category. And those categories are, uh, we'd have tours, cruises, um, private tours in one bag. We'd also have transfer, transfers. We'd also have uh, attraction tickets and activities as well. When we have the minimum commission rate, 1% above that minimum commission rate will then opt you into Vato Accelerate, and then it's entirely up to you uh, the rate that you want to give as well. Um, so there is a, a short video here. Um, I'm going to move it forward a little bit to show you, but in your vital management center, just get this here. Uh, this is not me demonstrating. This is a, a pre-recorded demonstration. It is very slow, but it will show you once you go into your Viator dashboard, um, you're able to see your list of products. Um, and when you go into Viator Accelerate, it will then show the Accelerate, uh, the kind of status for, every, for all of your products as well. So if you are on Viator, you do have an account, you'll be able to see this, you'll be able to see uh, the performance of it as well. And these, the red and yellow bars that you see are, um, what we call an invisibility score, um, and I'll come on to that in a moment too. Um, so this is just how to increase the commission on the products, and you'll see the uh, what happens to the visibility score as well. So there we go. As you increase, it moves up, and then it goes up to green to show you that your um, visibility score is in a really healthy position as well. Yeah. Okay, so just in terms of the understanding of visibility score and what it means, um, in every single destination for, um, yeah, for uh, across VAT or Accelerate, there is um, an average um, competitor score. So to give an example, in Athens, a competitor, if you are a tour operator operating a walking tour, a competitor would be every single type of tour. Um, we have thought about changing this to be a bit more um, unique and a bit more relevant, but 
Um, the way to see it is that every single product in a destination is potentially a competing product. Um, when a traveler lands on things to do in Athens, they uh, a lot of the time are taking inspiration. So whether it's a walking tour or whether it's a tour to Natura, they're all pretty much similar because they are looking for things to do out of Athens or, or, or in Athens, what they can do with their time um, in the city as well. So the competitive average score, um, as you can see on the top right, is at uh, 24. Um, and your score is at 59. This means that your, your visibility score is much better than the average. So you're more likely to get traffic. Um, and the higher, the higher it is, the more traffic you will get. Um, when your score is kind of on average, then you will get just a kind of average amount of traffic to your products. And then when your score is low, it's in the red, you're uh, likely to get sort of less traffic than you would if you were um, opted in to um, accelerate. So what it does, it just lets you compete against um, you know, other products within destination as well. Um, it also helps you make, um, it, it gives you a real time um, view on you know, the performance of your product as well. And one big factor behind it is the quality metrics. So if you have a, an excellent badge, you have a quality product, and then you go in and see your visibility score, it's very likely your visibility score is going to be strong to start with, and then moving it up, it's going to be, um, you know, the higher you get, the stronger your visibility score uh, will be as well. Um, I mentioned earlier, one of the big benefits of Via to Accelerate is having the Insights page. Um, and we have launched uh, an update to the Insights page as of this morning. Um, and you're now able to see at the point, so you're able to go back um, to a year, you're able to go back longer, to, and then see at the point where the red line is here, that's the point that this product was opted into Via to Accelerate. So you can see the difference before and after opt, opting into Via to Accelerate. Um, this section here that you can see is around the visibility. So the visibility, it just shows you the, um, you know, the level of commission you're on. It shows your score. It shows the uh, score against the average competition. And it shows the, uh, the top score within that destination. So it really shows you where you are kind of um, situated within that market too. Um, we have a bookings tab, which will show you your bookings. It shows you over, uh, it can show you over the last 30 days. It can show you 60 days. It can show you even longer as well. And it will show you also above the average, it will show you the average um, bookings within the destination as well. And finally, one great thing where you can really see where your uh, commission is being, uh, the extra commission that you're putting on is being spent. And I, I mentioned commission. Um, one way to potentially look at it is actually you are uh, investing in more traffic. So it's almost like a, a marketing spend, bringing more, more traffic, more page views back to your product. And this in this section, this is a really clear way of seeing the impact of your, your commission also. Um, we are making some improvements as well. So there are going to be um, a lot more ways that you can um, monitor your performance and you can make sort of um, decisions on that as well. Um, this, the benchmarking tools are were available for today. Um, and there is also a way that you can download um, your data into a, the CSV file as well. So it gives you a way of uh, downloading it and then you can manipulate that CSV file um, however you so wish as well. So that's it for Vato Accelerate. We have um, a few moments to go through some Q&A. Um, firstly, yeah. yes. <laughs> we have many questions. <laughs> Uh, regarding Accelerate, since this is the topic that uh, you are describing now, um, the top competitor in a destination, uh, it, the, his product is relevant with the product that I supply, for example, in Santorini, uh, the ground uh, tours and the, the land tours and the boat cruises yes. are uh, are competitors or not? Yes, they are they are competitors. Um, and again, oh. this this was looked at and the and it the, the one thing to, to look at is when you're a tourist arriving in Santorini, you want to see things to do in Santorini. So you are going to compete because the algorithm is competing again, you know, when you look at things to do, it's a mixture. So if you look at the, the all kind of tours which would include include cruises so water and include kind of every single category really that you can find it will list that so 
that then therefore means that everybody is a competitor. But what I noticed is that in each product, you have different uh, co top competitor. Is that right? I mean, in, uh, in a day cruise, in a morning cruise, I saw that my top competitor uh, spends, uh, gives, uh, has, has a score of 90, something like that. And on uh, the other product, the high score is 80. Okay. So you know how, uh, how this counts? Have you have you seen an example of that then? Working? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just before you're not uh, aware of that. No. Um. You can send it over, and I can. I'll give. Maybe I'll give more. Um. More clarity on that one. Okay. Um, but okay. yes. Yeah. Okay. So, I move on to other questions. Okay. I have a question from Alexis. Uh, he says that, that he can confirm that those who use Bokun Channel Manager, thank you, Alexis, <laughs> <laughs> are getting higher. Is that right? I don't. I don't think so. No, no, uh, yeah. no. The the one thing with um, I'm, I'm not going to tell Bokun yeah, go, on, go, on this go, thing. Go. <laughs> Save it too. <laughs> but, but but no, there's there's no there's no the only. No, I, I won't go there, but there's no, in terms of the algorithm, Boken doesn't get higher. Okay, okay. Um, Valentino, he has a question. He says that he cannot, uh, oh, he cannot cooperate with Viator because, okay, the first configuration he had made wasn't good and now he doesn't get accepted. Is okay. there a chance now? Maybe I could give you his... Uh, okay, Valentino, I will share your contact details with John and maybe you could find a way of cooperating. Yeah, abs absolutely, yeah. We, um, please, yeah, yeah, just wait. pass my details and I'll see, see what's happened there, okay. Okay, now, Alexis. Uh, Alexis has uh, boats. He, had, uh, he organizes boat cruises and he asks... How can we add multiple bank accounts? Boat operators may have several boats on multiple companies. Yes. Yeah. Um, is there a way of adding several uh, bank accounts for different products, but the, the account is one, is a unique account? Uh, unfortunately, we, we, can't, um, we can't do it that way. It has to be separate accounts. Um, yeah. I'm really sorry. There's no way around that. It has to be separate accounts. Yeah. As well. Okay. And the insurance, John. <laughs> yeah, insurance. insurance. Yeah, is a question. Since we have several boats doing cruises, it's the insurance, the coverage. Do you have, uh, could you do something for our suppliers, John? <laughs> yeah, do you know, if you're, I mean, if you're connected through Travel Autobus, um, absolutely, um, you know, it's part of our, you know, sort of our partnership, we can definitely um, reach out and see, see what we can do. Um, but definitely on products connected to travel autobus, we can certainly help you. Of course. Okay, that's good to know. So those who are facing problems with the insurance, especially uh, with the boat cruises, do let us know and we will uh, uh, be in touch with John and he, they, he will assist us. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look and I just need to see the documentation yeah. and go from there. Okay, okay. Another question. Um, from Nicolas, the main reason we might not get excellent badge on all our products would be the cancellation policy. I okay, because of because maybe the cancellation policy is uh, strict. It is, this is what he means. Yeah, the reason why we've got the excellent badge um, in place is really it's very customer facing. You know, we are um, you know aware of that. It's very customer friendly because it gives the customer the opportunity to cancel last minute. Um, I would say with the excellent badge, as long as you've got um, really strong reviews, as long as you have you know availability, I'd say you know connection through API, everything else can really still help you. You know, you will see products that are high up on the on the algorithm and the you know in terms of the ranking that don't have uh, a standard cancellation policy um so that you can still be very successful it will when a customer filters for free cancellation you know up until one uh, 24 hour, hours before then that will take you off the in terms of the filter it will take you away from the search results but 
Apart from that, you still have a good opportunity of, of being high on the, the product list. I would say if you can look at Vata Accelerate, that's one way that you could uh, really boost your product as well um, okay. on there. Okay. Ooh, too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me check. Okay. Um, Alexis, another question from Alexis. Uh, do we have to give a name on the photo that we upload that we configure on uh, Viator dashboard or just have six photos? Just six photos. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a, an image on it. It's just six photos. Um, in fact, I don't know, I'm not totally understanding um, what you mean, Alexis, but is that the caption or are you actually having the uh, like, I guess the caption. I bet the I caption. Guess the caption. Yeah, I I mean a caption helps because it's SEO on there. Um, really, I'd say if you can add a caption in, great. But um, you you know would say the the images are the most important part of it for sure. Yeah. Okay. Now regarding the accelerate program, uh, there's an issue from thirty percent up to forty percent. The score doesn't change. Yeah. What does that mean? It means the market is very, very competitive mm. on there. I, yeah, if, you know, if you're going to, it, it's worth just checking often on what's doing, but if it's not moving, it means it's a very competitive market that we've had a, a lot of people opt in to accelerate. This is a really busy time of the year now yeah. as well. Um, but if you are opted in, you know, you still have a good opportunity to get noticed. You know, you, you are get, you know, going to get an increase in your page views as well. So maybe you can keep it on 30% since there's no difference. Uh, yeah, yeah of, of course, it's something just it's something worth monitoring. Um, yeah. The great thing about the uh, insights tab on Accelerate, which again, we've got it's new today, is just to keep keep monitoring it and seeing see what's happened. Um, you can download your those reports as well. So you can get a good idea of what's happening uh, with your products on Accelerate. Um, you can be quite strategic as well. So you can put it on for, you can put it on for a day if you want, or you can put it on for, for longer. But we'd say that 30 to 60 days, it's then worth checking to see what happens with the visibility score. Um, I would just say with Vata Accelerate, it's still a very new marketing tool and we really appreciate the feedback and I, all the feedback I'm getting from, from you guys today is, is really important for us because then we give it back to the product team who manages uh, Vata Accelerate. And we want to learn, we want to have the best tool available to you as our suppliers. We want you to be able to use Vata as the best OTA in, in getting more bookings from us as well. Okay, another question from Ephemios. I have 50 excellent ratings on TripAdvisor and now on Viter just nine. How can this be fixed? Um, I'm not sure um, what you mean. Essentially on TripAdvisor, the, it's, it's diff the excellent rating is very different. It doesn't, um, the, VART, the excellent ratings on Viter do not um, apply on TripAdvisor. So the excellent badge is only available on Viter. Um, so I don't know whether it's a, um, certificate of Excellence or something on TripAdvisor. I don't know if you're able to kind of elaborate a bit more or if you email, um, maybe email Maria or I can follow up after and have a look at your product, your product specifically and be able to help you. Okay. Uh, Anna, you said you left a question on Instagram. Can you please share it here on the chat? That would help me a lot. Thank you. Uh, Christos, can it be activated only for specific dates? I, I think he's talking, yes, he's referring accelerate. to Accelerate, yeah. Yeah, it's not something you can preset. You can't, um, yeah, it, it's a really good idea though. I like that. Yeah. Um, so the one thing is, is just, it's very, it will be manual. You have to go in and, and look, but you can, yes, you can go in and say, if I, you want to have opt in to accelerate for May, you would just go in on the 1st of May and increase. And then at the end of May, you can take it off and then decide if you want to put it on in September, you can do that. I'd say always think ahead of when the kind of booking patterns will come, because if you want to increase the visibility, it's best to do it, you know, maybe 30 to 60 days before the 
when the bookings will really come. So we're seeing it now coming in and May we'll see more bookings coming in for June and July. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's good to kind of maybe strategically look at it that way. Yeah. So too. you can manually change it, but it yeah. doesn't have on the dashboard of Viter, as far as I know, as far as I remember, there is no way date range. So, no. but you can manually, you know, play with it. Yeah. Uh, as John uh, suggested. Yes. Now, um, we have two companies under the same email user on TripAdvisor. Oh, a hotel and a boat cruise around the island. Okay. Viator, we have to sign up with this email. Can we change that on TripAdvisor into Viator, Alexandra? Um, just trying to understand. I don't know, Maria, could we... Um, would we be able to collect this Q and A, and yeah, maybe I, yeah. I can respond to you because I, I would just want to see if um, Alexandra could send me more information about that and be able to, yeah. to to help. I think, yeah, I need to probably think about it. <laughs> Go away and have a think for sure. Okay. Um, now, Airbnb experiences a competitor of yours, John. Yes. <laughs> Uh, they tell us here that they give so many reservations and uh, what Viator, how Viator sees that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know that in Santorini, uh, Airbnb's um, been doing, doing very well. I think we are different businesses. Um, I think, but I think Airbnb is great. <laughs> please, please don't put this out in public. <laughs> but, but it, in terms, in terms of, I think what what they've done really well in, especially in the islands, is is making those um, products look, you know, like unique, with a local captain of a, of, you know, a catamaran and, and stuff like that. And that's that's really popular. I think we are, um, you know, it's it's always it's good to have competition, isn't it? <laughs> this is it, and um, but you know what we do very well with is um, especially the other side. We do very well with with most categories, but especially you know on the multi day tours and the the tours, the archaeological tours, we do very well with those. Airbnbs, I imagine, it's quite difficult to for them to to sell those, but yeah, I think it's great. I think it's good. You know, it's good that travel is booming back and everyone's uh, having fun. You know, competition, John, is good. <laughs> yeah, of course it is, of course. We, yeah. we, we also have a great competition uh, in Greece now. Many companies want, uh, you know, to enter the market. And I see many suppliers here that uh, use different booking engines, but the questions are coming from the Greek booking engine of Travelotopos directly to you. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's it's fine. I, anyway. think, <laughs> I, think, I think it's great. I mean, the one really great thing I've noticed is actually... When you're dealing with res tech, it can be quite complicated for a supplier at times. But this is great, you know, in especially in native um, native Greek, it's very good to understand those the technical side of um, the API and how it works. And you know, we're we're seeing it, I'm, and we're really you know working to see. We we really want to get more and more um, suppliers online. I think in Greece, Travelotopus makes so much sense uh, for Greek suppliers, and you know, we can keep pushing towards our goal. Um, for this year, for sure. Okay, I think we have exceeded our time. I will, you, John, will answer one more yeah. question. Yeah, sure. One. Who is the lucky one? Who is the lucky one? Okay, how long does it take uh, from the moment my product will be configured on Viator to be uh, published on TripAdvisor? You're looking at up to 48 hours. Um, Give it 72, just to be sure. Um, but really, it should be relatively quick. If it has not published onto TripAdvisor um, after, let's say, three, four days, then speak with the live chat team um, and they'll, they'll be able to assist on that one. Um, again, I'm happy to, if even if you wanted to give me your product code um, through Maria, uh, or even in the chat. Um, I don't know what's easier, Maria, but I, but I can follow up and I'd like to follow up with as many of these questions as possible to try yes. and help you guys for sure. Okay, so Anna, send me your product uh, code and I will share it with John. One last question from me. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> How important is the Greek market for Viator? 
for Vital, it's it's really important. Um, especially in so looking at 2020 and 2021, you know, when our traditional really big, the big European cities, which you imagine which ones those are, like your Paris and Rome, and they've taken a they took a long time to recover, but Greece. Uh, so Athens, Santorini, uh, Mykonos and uh, some of the other islands as well were really, really quick to recover. Um, in fact, at one stage, you know, Santorini was the top destination in Europe for Vital. So very, very important. The Greek market is um, it's a bucket list destination. It's where a lot of travelers are coming from, um, especially from the US, but across Europe as well. Um, Generally, most people I know will be going to Greece. I'm going to Greece this year. I'm going to Rhodes in August, so I'm very excited about that. I haven't left the U. I haven't left the UK for two and a half years, so you know I, I know how important it is as a destination um, for multi categories. Um, but for Viator, it's it's very important. Um, I mean, every destination is very important for Viator, but um, Greece is just it's growing. It's exciting and there's always something new as well. You know, there's we've got the the Athens and the Santorinis, which are always going to be popular, but you know, now we've got sort of new islands coming up, you know, new trendy places to go. So we want to make sure that we've got that supply as well, of course. Okay, good to know. <laughs> John, <laughs> thank you so much. I think we had a very interesting talk. Uh, maybe we could schedule this uh, for, uh, I mean, every year, right before the high season of Greece, we could share our news and our updates uh, through a live talk. Thank you so much. No and problem, no problem. And I hope all of you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your time uh, this afternoon. And um, yeah, good luck with the season. And um, we will speak very soon. Thank you, John. Have a great day. Thank you. Day. And you. Bye-bye.